It's the Man Cave Club. <laughs> Welcome back to the Man Cave Club, brother. <laughs> good to be back. All right. Yeah, it's good to see you, man. So, what are we talking about? Well, I'm so excited. <laughs> yeah, you, I bet you are. <laughs> Leather jackets, brother. Leather jackets. Yeah. One, so, one of your passions. I love right. leather jackets. Yeah, one of your passions. Yeah. yeah. I've, I've been on a journey the last few years. Oh, that's cool. Trying to find the perfect jacket. And I think I came pretty close. With this beautiful Simmons built vanishing point jacket from Standard and Strange. Very cool jacket. Yeah. Great movie. Great jacket. Exactly. So so tell me about it. I mean, if I, were, if I were to guess, it looks like a natural veg tan to me. It's just, it's got yeah. the look. It's got the, the, the fleshy, uh, <laughs> fresh hide look to it. Yeah, it's a veg tan horse hide, uh, natural tan, and still has a ways to go for the patina to kick in. Yeah. But absolutely. when this thing darkens and gets a little oily and dark and dirty, it's going to be really beautiful. I can't wait. I want to put some wear into it, some time into it. And I just, I love the very simple stripped down styling of it. Yeah. Um, you know, and, and the fit on me is just, I, I love it. I mean, it's, it's, it's beautiful. Um, it does fit you well, man, watching you walk around in it. I've seen you try it on a few times now over yeah. here. I like that it is more simplified. It doesn't have like extra buckles in the back. There's not like it's kind of a no frills jacket. Right. And I think to uh, the uninitiated, they might look at that and go, well, I don't know about that color. Yeah. But it's not the color it starts off as. That's the goal, right? The goal right. is what you know this thing is going to look like year in the years to come, right? Like yeah. nothing, I don't care. You can't produce a new leather that looks like well-aged natural veg tan leather. When this thing right. ages and gets that golden, those brown, like just all of that wear, like nothing that doesn't start off looking like this ends up ever looking like that. Right. It's, there's only one way to do it, right. and it's to go with a natural veg tan. But not everyone has the cojones to start off with a jacket this light in color. Like it's this right. simple fact, right? Yeah, it, yeah, that is a challenge, but you know, I just went for it. I mean, they do make this exact jacket in a tanned dark brown. Okay, cool. I'm pretty sure it's the exact same jacket, and yeah. it's it's equally as gorgeous sure. and beautiful. So some of the features that this jacket has, uh, of course, it's like we mentioned, it's a natural Veds tan, 1.2 millimeter horse hide from Italy. So it's a pretty hefty gauge leather. It has heavy duty antique brass talon zippers also has uh, two interior snap closure pockets. Um, it's just this jacket, uh, like I said, it's, it's, the styling's very low key, stripped down. You know, the, the shoulder gussets in the back are, it has shoulder gussets, but they're really high and tight, which is the way I like them. And now is that just a purely aesthetic um, like choice of yours, or does that have a function with like riding a motorcycle? Well, yeah, the silhouette of this jacket is actually a cafe racer motorcycle jacket with the collar added. It's a collaboration between Standard and Strange and Simmons Built, and um, Neil, the co-owner of Standard and Strange, he you know he's a motorcycle yeah. rider, and he had a hand in designing this. So I I give him kudos for coming up with this jacket um, for us motorcycle riders. Yeah, and yeah, having that extra mobility in the upper arms certainly is yeah. nice when you're on, on a motorcycle. Bike. That's cool. I think that the Simmons built is really it's on top. Yeah, I mean it's 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 dialed in. That's that's one of those things. Is uh, the the pattern and the the end fit. Mm -hmm. It's what that's what separates someone who can just look at a photo and like make kind of kind of a recreation and right. put it out there, and someone who has spent the time, you know, making the alterations. And the only way mm -hmm. that you can check those alterations is to make a full jacket. 
So it's it's extremely yeah. labor intensive. Sure. Like if you it takes years. Yeah, whoever the maker is, I mean, if they want to take an, an inch out of the back, they have to make a full jacket to test that. Right. To test that, they can't just like, eh, what, you know, let's, right. let's just wing it, right? So it's a lot of time to really dial in a fit and then and then create it out. Yeah, I think mean, that's a testament to Simmons built and, and his patterning skills and yeah and uh, yeah, it's an incredible jacket. I can't wait to see that thing uh, age and patina over time. Uh, so, what are you what are you wearing there, Jimmy? So this is my one and only leather jacket. This is a uh, classic bomber from North Shore Leather, and uh, it's, nice. It's, it's a single single guy, single maker by himself. Uh, his name is Mark Fisher. He's out of Minneapolis, and uh, yeah, I kind of just stumbled across him. I was I was a uh, leather jacket curious mm -hmm. but uh as doing, you, doing uh, the old uh, internet search yeah and and as you know uh leather jackets are not cheap right and so there's you know a few ways to get deals mm -hmm. by used it's a major <laughs> investment for sure buying a leather jacket <clears throat> absolutely so i stumbled across mark in his instagram through uh greg of field leathers mm. for, over there in england um, I think he's in England. Maybe he's in Scotland. Oh, Scotland. Man. I hope I didn't offend him. Yeah, Scott. He's definitely Scottish. <laughs> uh, Greg makes amazing jackets, really cool jackets, and he often, you know, he chronicles his whole process on his Instagram story. Sometimes you can mm -hmm. see I mean, every single step of him making a jacket. Right. He makes beautiful jackets. He does. He really does. And uh, <clears throat> and he had posted uh, Mark's account on his story, and he said he says something to the effect of. When I was starting out, Mark taught me a lot of stuff about making jackets. Mm. He's a really, really good jacket maker. Mm -hmm. And I said, well, that, that's a pretty good endorsement. Because I know this guy is well accepted and loved in the community. And he's praised for his work. Right. And if he's endorsing this guy, he, hey. must, he must be pretty good, right? So right. I took a look and I couldn't believe the prices. I mean, this, his prices are like between six to eight and they're, I mean, they're, they're really, really good. So I, so I reached out to Mark. I said, Hey man, I think I'm interested in uh, finding this jacket at the time. This mm -hmm. classic bomber was not actually on his website. He just does, he does a lot of, uh, like reproduction, um, you know, aviation jackets, a twos, like down to like the exacting detail right. uh, for the people who, who really care about that. Right. So I reached out to him. I saw a photo of someone wearing this almost exact jacket on his Instagram. And I said, that, that looks like a style of jacket I could wear. That looks pretty safe for dipping my, my toes first in, right? Mm -hmm. and, and the process is cool. So I reached out to Mark via email. He told me, hey, this is, he kind of laid everything out for me. And I just, I got in line, right? It took about two and a half months. A few things happened with him over the summer. He got married and stuff. And uh, when my name came up on his list, we started the process. I sent him measurements. I took measurements of myself. I took measurements of a jacket I liked the fit of. Mm -hmm. I sent him photos of me wearing that jacket. And from that, he, you know, he makes a pattern for me based off of his already patterns and he'll tweak them and stuff, you know? So if, he's, if he's to be custom building a jacket specifically for you. From scratch yeah. every time for and each customer. And it shows because that jacket really fits it you It fits well. me super well, like in, incredibly well. And you get to pick like every detail, man. I mean, he has like five or six options for these knits and uh, you choose the zipper. I went with a, a um, new old stock Talon. So this is like an original, I don't know, 30s, 40s Talon zipper, yeah. NOS Good zipper. Good choice, yeah. And, uh, but you can get wacky K, you can get reproductions. You choose the interior layout. I went with two snap closure interior pockets. Mm -hmm. um, they're canvas lined. You choose your lining. I went with this kind of brown, earthy tartan. Cause I had a hard time choosing the lining. I was, <laughs> I was between two and I was like, yeah. you know what, Mark? Like, I trust you based on the knit color. Like, just can you pick for me? Right. You know, and he chose this and I, I love it. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, there's maybe, I think like 10 to 15 different options for lining. And, right. and, uh, and well, then, some, some guys, they do like to go with a real flashy lining. Yeah. Right. Yeah, he had some bright ones, and and yeah. I was like, you know, like dipping my toes. I'm trying to go a little more conservative, right. like, you know. And yeah. uh, and then this, I went with the uh, seal brown cowhide. Mm. So it was cool too because he sent out samples, like a 
you know, like a like a business card size oh, wow. yeah, sample cool. of each of the leathers. Yeah. He does a russet brown, a seal brown, and a black in cowhide and horse hide. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you get you get all those samples and you can feel them and smell them and look at them outside in the light yeah. before you choose, you know, which what you want to go with. But I'm super happy with this jacket, man. It fits me well. It's super warm. Like it's it's really warm. I don't need anything under this but a t-shirt and yeah. on, you know, the coldest days around here at least. So. Yeah. Oh, and the hand warmers, man. Love Love me some hand warmers. That oh was, yeah, that was like a, I'm such a hand warmer, like fiend. I gotta have really? hand, hand warmer pockets yeah. in a jacket, man. And well, keep your hands warm and uh, rest your arms. Too. Yeah, and so <laughs> that was why I went over, went with this style over like a like a standard like A2 with the the front flap. Oh right, yeah, yeah, the standard. Oh, which I was this is about this that. is really similar style to an A2. Right, but it's just the, like the civilian version, right? Right, so, it's just a few things yeah. tweaked. Uh, it's sort of a hybrid between uh, an A2 and maybe a campus jacket. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. the campus would have like a, a knit collar too, right? right? Which he does. He does. Mark can do that too. So yeah, yeah. you like that knit collar look. And yeah. sky's the limit, man. So yeah, check him out. <laughs> North Shore, North Shore uh, jackets, man. He's you know less known than than some, but he does really quality work. So. Awesome. And if you can get your hands on one of these Vanishing Point jackets from Standard and Strange. I highly recommend it. All right, Paul. So we talked about the jackets that you and I are wearing, right. but I know you have a lot more. And I think we have a special guest, special segment coming up. Yes. Right? Yes, indeed. We have uh, my good buddy, John from Shot Leather. Whoa. It's coming down and we're going to talk shot leather. We're going to talk motorcycle jackets and we're going to talk particularly asymmetric zip motorcycle jackets. So I'm really excited for this segment. That sounds really cool, man. I really don't know a darn thing about that topic, <laughs> so I'm going to I'm gonna learn me a thing or two listening to you guys talk. All right. So. Well, we'll cut to that segment right now. All right. So, hey, John, thanks for uh, joining us here in the Man Cave Club. It's my pleasure to be here, Mr. Paul. All right, That's brother. Awesome. So um, we're going to talk about shot leather today um and you're sort of a little bit of an expert because you you work at the uh, <laughs> san francisco shot leather store right that's right uh i've been working there you know i would say crazy to say but like five years now yeah and it's just been the coolest experience and like being with people that love what we love, right? Yeah. And I can just the just the culture even surrounding shot. I mean, it's just yeah, Americana, so Americana, made in the USA, right? right? It's got a rich heritage. I've got my own right here. This is the what they call the 118. This is a little bit fuller cut. I'm a bigger dude, right? So mm -hmm. I need a little bit more room to yeah. uh, have that comfort, uh, especially on the bike, right? The 118, the number one denotes that it's a naked cowhide, which is my favorite leather shot does. It's a little controversial as far as, uh, you know, being able to weather the elements, being mm -hmm. that the naked cowhide means that there's no additional uh, top coat applied to the leather. Mm -hmm. But being that this jacket takes 11 hides and that they are all chosen to match up perfectly with the rest of the jacket. Right. And you really see the lack of imperfections in the leather just right out the gate. And it's chosen out of the best of the best of the hides. And yeah, well, it's, it's a beautiful jacket for sure. The 118 runs a little, it's a little fuller cut than what, the 618 and the 613? Yes. Okay. So there's the 613. They call that the one star because on the epaulets, there's a one star. Mm -hmm. uh, that's what put shot on the map as like this rebellious motorcycle, individualistic rebel image that right. we all know and love. Um, there's the 618, which this 118 uh, basically replicates. There's also the 613S, which is probably the slimmest of okay. all of them. Uh, and the 618, is uh, has a different leather than the 118 as well. So it's a little bit more cropped. We're talking about the classic asymmetric zip, a favorite 
for motorcycle riders. Um, I mean, mainly for my understanding is that to have that that uh, this section of the jacket sort of overlays over the right section creating this you know protection through your chest from like wind when you're on a, on a motorcycle absolutely a hundred percent yeah that's why you see the snaps on the collar themselves mm -hmm. again you don't want your collars flying in the wind you know right and another cool thing about shot specifically is that they were the first company to apply a zipper to a jacket you know you've oh, seen that with like maybe like you know the button fly uh, I think Prince William or somebody in Europe actually adopted it for their pants but right. the zipper was actually first applied via a shot so it's another really cool detail about yeah, how I didn't know that yeah that's awesome um, so yeah so if we're gonna talk about like first uh, pertaining to shot uh, <laughs> there's there's actually a, this is based upon, like he said, the 618 to 613, which was considered one of the original motorcycle jackets dating back to the 1940s, 50s. Yes. And uh, the jacket, of course, that famously Marlon Brando wore oh, yeah. in the wild one. And there is some discussion about, and different theories about the, what jacket he actually wore in yes. that film, right? Yeah. Although maybe we'll really never know but um, so, what's your take on it? I mean, some people say that it's it's a a durable brand leather jacket with the stars added to make it look like a shot jacket. Uh, what's what's your take on that? I personally, I'll tell you this. So I may have ta told you this already, but you know, you could tell a shot beyond other jacket brands simply by looking at the lapels here. Uh, one dead giveaway of a shot is that the lapels are going to be higher mm -hmm. and tighter, right. as you can see here. Uh, the one Marlon Brando was wearing, to me, kind of looked a little bit more like the one you have on. It's got that low lapel there, mm -hmm. and um, that could be an indication that maybe they were right, you know, shot was producing that beautiful 613 one star they may not have had one on hand they threw some stars on it and there you go but right. uh, you know you may be right about that we may never know but I like to think that it's probably more along the lines of a 618 put some stars on it to make it look like the, the 613 that's right right um, let's talk about this beast right here my yeah. goodness this is the uh, attic clothes Butterscotch LB Tri Jacket. So it's like hybrid jacket. It's a competition leather style jacket, but it has the asymmetric zip. Uh, and I just love this jacket. I'm getting to the point where it's like nice and broken in now. And, uh, you know, Tommy down at Butterscotch in Long Beach. Shout uh, out to Butterscotch. Yeah. yeah he, Great stuff. Yeah. He designed this jacket, basically. He put this jacket together. Uh, and it's... It's sort of loosely based on their attic clothes, the, the rider's jacket, which is based on, I think, the British uh, Lewis Leather Lightning jacket, uh, sort of a competition, mm. the, the British Lewis Leather brand, their competition uh, leather jacket. The fit on me, I, I, I like jackets to be a little snug mm -hmm. it on fits me. you great yeah I, that's just the way I, I like my jackets to fit um I don't, I don't like a lot of fabric like when i'm on my motorcycle like flapping around right you know when i'm on the freeway doing 70 miles an hour yeah. you know? and it's, it's a slim fitting jacket streamlined jacket you know it doesn't work for everyone but for me i tend to go for a a slimmer fit mm -hmm. in terms of leather jackets. What size are you wearing here then? Well, this is actually a 38. Ah, okay. So, I mean, I probably could have went with a 40, mm -hmm. but uh, just to have a little extra room, but I decided to go with the 38. But I, I like that it's it's a little snug around me and it sort of almost fits, I would say, it's almost like wearing a leather shirt or a like shirt that. jacket. Yes. Uh, which I kind of like, you know. 
One of the things I like too, and a lot of guys would probably appreciate about this jacket, and it con we can contrast it here with the shot jacket, is that you've got brass instead of nickel. Right. And a lot of guys are turned off by the bright nickel. You can see mine is kind of um, patinaed over time, but mm -hmm. a lot of guys would probably go with the, the brass hardware on this one too. Right. I'm assuming those are uh, heavy duty YKK zippers or talon or something like that. And yeah, I, I think they're YKK with the attic close branding on it. That's a cool jacket, man. Tell me a little bit more about what made you choose this one. Okay, so yeah. I was in your store in San Francisco, yeah. and I tried this jacket on in brown, which is the shot P623H horse hide jacket. Mm -hmm. And it just fit me perfectly. And it's the type of jacket that I like, more stripped down, cleaner aesthetic. Just That's just my personal taste. Like I said, I originally tried the brown version on in the store, and then by the time I circled around to buy the jacket, um, the jacket, because it was such a limited run, mm. it was they were sold out, they were hard to find, yep. um, and I picked up this jacket uh, on the Fedora Lounge. It's crazy what you can find on the Fedora Lounge. Yeah. It's the black version, which is really cool because it has, you know, has the murdered out hardware. It has we'll all the black that. hardware. Murdered out, uh, yes. Yeah, and it's my favorite shot jacket. Well, right on, man. Uh, you know, shot leather. I mean, it's, it's what, a, what a great company. What a great jacket. My all-time grail jacket is right here. The holy grail. The holy grail for me, for Paul. Hey, I'm with the, you too, this man. This is the, the, the flathead Delrazor jacket. And I waited a long time to own this jacket. Um, it's just my all-time favorite jacket. And kind of interesting story. I tried this jacket on when it was first released, I think back in like 2015. Uh, 2016 at Selfedge in San Francisco because it's specifically made for Selfedge. Um, it's a stripped down uh, version of the original, one of the original Buco jackets, Buco out of Detroit, um, but without the belt loops, without the apulets, um, and that's kind of what I gravitate towards. I like a, a jacket that's a little more stripped down. And because of the price point of the jacket, yeah, it was, I took a little bit They're of a pause. They're up there. They are definitely up there. Yes. So I, I like went home, thought about it for a few days. By the time I called the store back to have them hold it for me, um, it had sold. Yeah, it's definitely not one of those like impulse buy, you're just gonna snatch it off the shelf right. kind of thing. Yeah. Mm. Then I had to wait like three years, yeah. man. I think for we're them gonna... to re release this jacket. Yep. And I personally I thought that, you know, the jacket was gone forever. Of course I was still searching for this jacket, which was, you know, my ultimate favorite grail jacket. Mm. And in the meantime, the in the next uh subsequent years I was looking for a, an asymmetric zip jacket for myself. I ended up buying several other jackets to replace this jacket that I missed out on. Yep. And then There's come... There's no, nothing like your first love, right? <laughs> right, exactly. And then come, you know, like 2021, uh, when they, the Flathead re-released the Dell Razor. And I, you had a tip, right? I Going got a back tip. to the Fedora Lounge? Yeah, I, I got a so. tip on Fedora Lounge. Uh, one of my buddies on Fedora Lounge sent DM me and said, hey, they're re-releasing the Dell Razor. And That's a good friend right there. <laughs> right, exactly. And it was like the week that they were going to release it. And I called up Selfedge. And I was like, man, you got those jackets in. Here's my deposit. <laughs> Hold one for me. Yeah, that I thing is mine. That, right? I want that jacket. Yeah, yeah. And I was there man. the next day, the next morning, man. I drove in and picked it up. What yeah. size did you go with? This is actually a 40. They run pretty true to size. We could talk about sizing a little bit. I'm about a 
39 inch chest, 40 inch chest. This is like maybe 20, like the outside pit to pit measurement is maybe like 21 inches. If you allow for fabric, so the inside measurement, it's, it's, it's like true to size. It's a 40, it, and this jacket fits me like really like it was custom made for me. Fantastic. Yeah. You had a good friend at Selfridge, it sounds like. Shout out to them, right? Oh yeah, I love <laughs> Selfridge, man. I mean, we're so lucky to live in the Bay Area, to have great stores like oh, Selfridge man. and Standard and & Strange oh, and yeah. Shot Leather. Oh yeah. So when did the Shot Leather store open? What year, do you um, remember? I think somewhere around 2018. Yeah, it sounds about right. And and, and when uh, I when I found out there was oh my god there was a shot leather store in San Francisco man I flipped out, I was like oh shit what yeah <laughs> I, I so excited for yeah. that you know because uh, and it's such a cool store oh yeah um, it's one of the biggest shot stores it's funny yeah and uh, I think there's certainly a place for I've been to shot stores in other cities and they're usually pretty small stores the one in New York is like a closet right yeah you guys have a nice space there um, yeah it's a nice store it's a great location mm -hmm. and man I hope you hang in there I hope you stick around yeah I mean yeah. there's a there's like I said you know you, you have your shot I mean San Francisco it's cold it's foggy right there's definitely a place for them for sure yeah and to see you know self edge right next to them is just amazing because yeah. I mean this and a lot of your jackets just like how cool a, a leather jacket can be right and there's something really special to me about like because you discover them right yeah and I think there's something unique about you know finding a niche of jacket that has such a history, right? Yeah. And, you know, Buco, that I believe the real McCoys bought the um, rights to that name, and they do, like, just right. almost, like, immaculate representations right. or recreations, I should say, of yeah. those original jackets. Yes. And for Self Edge to reach in and dip into that history, too, and come up with what they have here is just really cool. Well, right on, John. Okay, well, uh, hey, thanks for coming down. Oh, uh, my man. To the Man Cave Club. The Man Cave Club for yeah. life, baby. <laughs> and it's, uh, it's been fun hanging out with you and talking leather. And uh, if you guys are in San Francisco, stop by the Shot Leather store and say hello to John. Check out all the great leathers they have there. And... Uh, Yes, please. Let's go on a ride, too, man. I ride motorcycles. and I'm there, man. Yeah. You know... Uh, we're going to go... As a matter of fact, we're going to go for a little ride right now. Let's hit the road, baby. All right. <laughs> Man, that was a really cool segment with you and John. You guys covered a lot of ground. Yeah, yeah. John's a really good dude, and he's got a lot of knowledge, especially about shot leather. Yeah, that was, that was this was a fun episode of film, Paul, and uh, I've learned a lot about leather jackets through this this time hanging out with you. And uh, who knows, maybe I'm ready to start uh, window shopping for my next my next purchase. We'll, well see. I, I'm sure we're, we'll definitely revisit oh, yeah. this topic of leather jackets because we still there's a lot we haven't covered. We'll circle around again, maybe in the future, come back to it and. That sounds Talk great. More yeah, about it. I know you got some uh, some hidden gems that were not seen on camera today, <laughs> hiding in your yeah. closet. So I, <laughs> right. I know this won't be just like motorcycles. I know this won't be the last uh, last episode on this topic. So. Right, exactly, brother. Cool. Yeah. Well, hey, thanks for joining us uh, this episode on the Man Cave Club. Remember, it's Jimmy and Paul talking about it all That's right it. here on the MCC. Like and subscribe. Turn your <laughs> notifications on. See you guys next time. It's the Nanky Club.